Oh hey there, it's me, your friendly neighborhood polyphonic. I'm here today because of something really exciting. My book, Century of Song, is officially out. Wherever books are sold, or I guess most of the places books are sold, I don't know if it's in every bookstore, but it's a lot of places books are sold across the US and Canada. If you're elsewhere in the world, the book will be coming out a bit later. In the UK, it's coming out October 24th, and it'll be about eight to 10 weeks from now for Australia and New Zealand. As for other places, I'm not really sure. But if you're in America or Canada, you can walk down to your local bookstore and possibly buy it right now, which is really cool. So to celebrate the release, I thought I'd give you another story time with Polyphonic. Today, we're gonna read the final chapter of the book, 2023. And this chapter is on Paint the Town Red by Doja Cat. Let's get into it. The age of social media brought fans closer than ever to the musicians shaping the pop culture of the world. This platform allowed musicians to thrive and launch their careers to enormous height, but it has also become one of the phantoms plaguing today's pop stars. Fans in the modern age feel more ownership than ever over the musicians they adore, obsessing over their every move in rabid, toxic, one-sided relationships. This so-called stan culture, named after an Eminem song about an obsessive fan, came to dominate internet discourse as the world moved into the mid-2020s. Some artists, such as Taylor Swift and Beyonce, have capitalized on their obsessive fan bases to build global empires. But in 2023, Doja Cat took a different approach. In the middle of summer, she dropped Paint the Town Red, a searing hip-hop song that pivoted from Doja's light pop sound to a heavier hip-hop edge and fired overt shots at the most obsessive of her fans. Paint the Town Red came after an early career that saw Doja Cat get wrapped up in controversy after controversy. In the early spring of 2023, she tweeted that her first two pop albums were cash grabs, a move that angered and alienated fans who adored those albums. She doubled down a few months later when she rejected the Kittens label that many of her most obsessive fans had adopted. These are just a few of the controversies that have followed Doja since her rise to fame. Some, like an attempted cancellation after discovering that she used to participate in alt-right chat rooms online, have legs. Others, like an image surfacing of her vaping at the 2023 Met Gala, are reflections of a modern media world that thrives on outrage clicks. The most absurd of the supposed controversies came when Doja Cat shaved her head in the summer of 2022. Many of her fans took to Twitter to criticize this look, with people declaring that she was ugly and some even saying she looked like a demon. These comments reflect the pervasiveness of stan culture and the pervasive gaze that follows celebrities in the modern age. Paint the Town Red is a scattershot response to all of Doja's controversies, big and small. She leaned into the demonic accusations, singing a hook of mmm she the devil, she a bad little bitch she a rebel, and pairing with a stylized video full of demonic horror aesthetics. The song's verses are a triumphant call of self-actualization, with Doja declaring that she's not going to find success in new features or sidekicks, but rather by creating art that the people around her love. Doja Cat doubles down on her identity as an online provocateur, teasing the fans and media alike as a smooth sample of Dionne Warwick's Walk On By runs in the background, underlining the fact that Doja has no desire to engage with her haters anymore. As it turns out, rejecting the temptation to play to the crowd only raised her profile. Paint the Town Red soared to the top of the Billboard Hot 100, giving Doja her second number one and first as a solo artist. Doja Cat is the quintessential artist of the digital age. Her career was launched by a surreal viral hit, and her entire ascent is filled with the markers of a digital native. She constantly trolls press and fans alike, using controversy as a tool to raise her own profile, while defying the traditional media training and roadmapped career path of the pop stars of old. Paint the Town Red was an assertion of Doja's status as one of the most singular artists of her era. It combined careful lyricism with a carefree attitude to reshape her public image, and pointed a mirror back at the toxic fandoms developing in the modern age. The mid-2020s are an era defined by controversy and collapse. Old institutions in politics, finance, and the art industry are beginning to crumble under the sheer weight of modernity. 
hard economic times have people throwing themselves deeper than ever into celebrity worship and online infighting as they search for escape and meaning. Rather than bow to this desire for an easy world, Doja Cat overtly toys with narrative and defies easy definition. As much as Paint the Town Red is a celebration of her own individuality, it also sends a message to all those reeling from our strange age. Your salvation is not going to come from celebrity, and your war is not going to be won from behind a keyboard. The subtext of Paint the Town Red declares that the self-actualization that so many people are desperate for can only come from within. There you go. That is the last chapter of Century of Song. Um, I think it was interesting to sort of reflect and read this now, looking at what's going on with Chapel Roan and her rejection of fame. And I think it shows that maybe we're reaching an era where pop stars are starting to understand the dangers of fame, especially as they're growing up more media savvy. But, you know, we'll see. And to that measure, I thought I would finish on some closing thoughts. Um, this is the end of the book. Spoilers, I guess, if you want to read it all and get to the closing thoughts. Um, don't watch the next section of the video, but I promise this is really not a spoilery book. There's, there's a linear narrative throughout it because time passes in a linear way, generally speaking, hopefully. But really, I designed this book for you to be able to pick up and read any chapter that's interesting to you. So with all that in mind, let's have a look at what I thought about the future when I wrote this book a year ago. Has it all come to pass? Who knows? This is the first time I'm reading this since I, since I wrote it, so let's see. I think that the natural inclination here at the end of our journey is to ask what comes next. As I write this book, popular music, like so many industries, is standing at a precipice. Platforms like Spotify and TikTok are radically changing the way that people interact with music as we speak, and generative AI is developing by leaps and bounds by the day, threatening to completely transform how music is made. Hip-hop's decades-long reign atop the charts seems to be slowly waning, but no new successor has risen up to challenge its throne. Nostalgia reigns supreme as old songs are made new again, and the cycle of virality has quickened to a relentless pace. It seems inevitable that something is going to give, but what that change will look like is anybody's guess. If I've learned anything from this experiment, it's that nobody can truly know what's coming next. Time and time again, movements have risen from obscurity overnight to take over the music world, challenge the mainstream, and redefine our understandings of art. Almost without exception, these movements come from those on the margins. They come from people who have been left out of the power structures of society, from communities who have been forced to seek refuge and vitality in one another's shared experience. For all the brilliant individualism in the music industry, no great movement rises in a vacuum. Music is communal by its very nature, born from the love and joy that comes with sharing the human condition with one another. Whatever collection of sounds coalesces to shock the world and transform the industry next, it will not come from a single visionary, but from a commonwealth of expression, from communities standing on the shoulders of giants and imagining a better world. Popular music is one of America's great gifts to the world. For over a century, it has provided comfort, joy, and meaning to the lives of millions. It's been a tool used to fight oppression and a soothing balm for anyone struggling with the sometimes suffocating weight of existence. It's brought communities together and created some of the greatest artistic triumphs in the history of our species. At the same time, the story of popular music is one rife with tragedy and exploitation. The music industry is fraught with greed and systemic racism, legacies that persist to this day. The tension between these twin legacies plays out in every new song you hear. For all the fears and uncertainties of modern music, it's important to remember that we live in unprecedented times. We live in an era where everyone with a song in their heart has easy access to the tools necessary to create music and the platforms that allow them to share it with the world. Never before have so many people had so much access to the brilliant creation that is American popular music. Right now, you have access to a century of human triumph at the click of a button. There is a river of song sprawling out in front of you, 
each one a living marker of the complexities of American history, and each a reflection of the brilliant diversity of humankind. So why not dive in? All right. Well, thanks for indulging me on this. And it's it's been a really long journey to get to this point. Um, it feels a little surreal that you can go buy this book on shelves. And, you know, um, I guess from here, it's it's in your hands. I, I put a lot of work into this. I put a lot of thought into it. But I'm a big believer that when you put something out into the world, it is up to the audience to do what they will with it. So I hope you enjoy this. I hope it helps you recontextualize your visions of music. I hope you agree with me. I also hope you disagree with me. I hope maybe it inspires you to think about where the songs you love fit into the wider picture of human history. Okay, so yeah, um, again, you can buy this book wherever books are sold. Um, and I hope you enjoy. Thank you so much for your support. This literally would not happen without you. All right. Farewell. I'm so bad at sign-offs. I'm still so friggin' bad at signing off. Bye.